Thank you. <clears throat> so the title of my paper is Women and Nature in Chinua Achebis Things Fall Apart. So I have analyzed this paper through eco-feminist lens. And eco-feminist is uh, tied to the study of the interval and intricate relationship between women and ecology. It seeks to account for the close connectivity and inseparable bond between women and nature in society. The theory projects that the subjugation of women and oppression of nature are linked together. When women are oppressed and violated, the nature is invariably threatened and vis-a-vis -vis when nature is at the receiving end of man's uncontrolled actions, women are also threatened. The exploitation of the women due to power, class, gender and race are directly linked to the exploitation of our environment. And all these are made manifest in the novel I have taken. In this novel, Achebe, perhaps consciously or unconsciously, revealed through his writing this interconnectedness between women and nature. Uh, women in the novel were seen as the emblem of productivity, sustenance, fertility and continuity on whom the peace, prosperity and survival of the community heavily rest upon. Nature worked hand in hand to ensure the peace, stability and fertility of the whole community. In the novel, writer presented to us the real values and role of the earth goddess Ani. And Ani was not just like any other goddess. She was the earth goddess responsible for fertility and growth of crops on Umofia. Uh, she oversees the harvest and blesses all hardworking farmers with the abundance ha of uh, harvest. And this was why a week was devoted in her honor. It was the week of peace. The week is observed in between harvest season and the next planting season. Every man is at peace with his neighbor and no evil is committed or violence or trusted during this period. And it was during this period that protagonist of the novel, who was a male and his name was Okonkwo, he in his readiness to display his bravery and sheer heroism, he beaten his wife Ojugo during this week for her inability to provide him meal at an appropriate time, a duty which she abandoned to go and plate her hair. And then it was Iziani, who was the priest on Ani, uh, that spelt out the implication of this abominable act to Okonkwo, thereby showing the role, value and importance of the earth goddess in the lives of Umofia people. So this violation of week of peace with the beating of Ojugu has a lot of symbolic implication that an eco-feminist critic will find uh, interesting and uh, insightful. The incident is highly uh, symbolic in the sense that it goes a long way to reveal the tie between uh, women and nature, and which is highly symbolic and powerful in the African context. And uh, also there was another festival uh, that honors the goddess of Ani. It was the feast of the new yam. And it was the occasion for giving thanks to Ani, the earth goddess and the source of all fertility. And uh, uh, when Ani is pleased, the community enjoys fertility and great harvest, little wonder why many women in Omofia were productive, inclusive the wives of Okonkwo. All Okonkwo's wives were gifted with the fruit of the womb. And, um, and the Ani goddess, it's, she is protective with equal justice. She stands as a balance between living and death. If a man commits any crime, Ani will see to it. No member of the community will be killed without Ani marshalling out the right punishment to the culprit. That was why when Okonkwo accidentally killed son of Izudu, Ani had to take her revenge to appease the soul of deceased and community at large. So Okonkwo has to be punished thus. The only course open to Okonkwo was to flee from the clan and it was a crime against the earth goddess to kill a clansman. A man who committed it must flee from the land. The crime was of two kinds male and female, and Okonkwo had cried, uh, committed the female crime according to the African because it has been 
inadvertent and uh, besides uh, nature uh, it ha it plays a protective role in the novel it was an agent of comfort and succor which the women also provided for in the novel nature was always a source of hope restoration and liberation to people who await her gift at all time and the writer once described nature her role and natural gift as well as is what she represents in the life of people um, so there is a long quote which i want to cut short because uh, so as to cover my all the points in my paper uh, then um, also some men connect with their women irrespective of their bravery heroism and achievement uh, this is the case of ogbufi dulu he was oldest man in ayat and unlike okongo he had maintained a close tied relationship with his wives especially his first wife ozo enmena both were said to have one mind and songs were fashioned with their names they never did anything without telling the other little wonder that when ogufi dulu died ozo amena came and called his name twice she staggered back to her room and died in other to be united with her husband in after life um also um a woman like nature they provide comfort uh, to men which they always seek uh, when okonko accidentally killed the son of his yudu during his burial his mother's place was the only place he could find peace shelter and comfort in the seven years of exile from umofia and it was in banta with uh, which is his mother's place that okonko came close to realizing the value and importance of women in life uh they were not just for procreation and child bearing they protect and give succor whenever it is needed just like the earth goddess women give peace shelter and harmony which men may never provide, provide as they continue to sound the drum of violence and war and uh, it was in his motherland only that he uh, began to dawn or uh, it it began to dawn on a conco that he he uh, started uh, seeing women in a different perspective and he later named his daughter nenka uh, which means mother is supreme so uh, to conclude i would like to say that uh, hba obviously seeks for the liberation and fair treatment of all these women ojogo nanka and ozo emena uh, equifi many others uh, which i can't cover in this paper which will go a long way to ensure peace stability and harmony in our world for when women are at peace and harmony nature too is at peace and will yield her dividends to full benefits the way a happy woman would yield all her sweet benefits to her man when her heart is happy and well pleased so here i conclude my paper thank you ma'am Uh, actually ma'am your voice is breaking but i can make out that you are asking me to uh, about the title yeah uh, in connection and nature a uh, connection of title with nature yeah see uh, it's it has been taken from uh, the yeats poem um uh, thanks for all apart so here um when the it was uh, in this um, 
actually if we see it through eco critical point of view it was a time when colonizer they have started uh, you know their invasion it was the beginning of invasion uh, of the this uh, the beginning of the colonial rule and they were um, uh, set uh, there they were setting the colony in the african land and what they were doing they were uh, they have started exploiting the nature and the natural deities and everything and they were putting all these things into even their psyche also as uh, um, len white one of the critics he say he says that christianity is the most anthropological uh, religion the world has ever witnessed so this anthropology where they have put human at the center and nature at the uh, periphery so they were uh, they, they have come with this uh, their christian religion so with their uh, mission they have uh, you know uh, put these things in their psyche and later in the novel we'll see that how the people who were um, for whom nature was at the center uh, so how they have started exploiting nature and without giving any thoughts and uh, earlier they were little afraid but then when they, they saw that there was no no such kind of punishment from the god side so they have started exploiting it so and then um, in in the sequels like arrow of god and uh, other uh, novels we could see the things how they have changed or rather in in uh, other african novels like of ben okris the famished road and others that uh, th this uh, intrusion of colonial rule has taken such a bad shape at the later part so uh, the things they have fallen apart so in this way uh, uh, the title is justified and it uh, talks about the falling apart of nature thank you ma'am thank you ma'am okay Dr. Krishna Sharma. Dr. Krishna Sharma. So we move to the next presenter, uh, Mr. Rajan. I hope you are there. Yes, ma'am. This is Kanagarajan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, shall I present my paper? Yeah, you can present. Uh... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my paper is uh, uh, Roginton Mysteries Perspectives on the Dispersion of Indian Culture and Women's Condition. Uh, especially, I have selected uh, three novels uh, uh, written by Roginton Mystery. One is Spine Balance and Family Matter and Such a Long Journey. What is the core area of this uh, paper is uh, Misty has created the wide variety of the female character in this three work of the fiction and its the criticism and acclaimed. He has received for how he treated them hardly touches the surface. The spouse, widow, mother and single women in each of his stories will be in the center of this debate. Which will also look at the specific of the private and public colonies. This study will also use the number of socio or uh, historical and cultural theories to describe how the women are alternative and repressed and impassionated in the variety role. In this addition, examine to that Indian woman in generally a Percy community is predominant uh, focus of this uh, Rogue Inter Mysteries novel, especially talking about uh, Percy culture. Uh, especially what is uh, what are the things I will be you know, focused on this paper, especially uh, in the part of women's suffering is women's conditions in India. One is an equality, unequality is there and simultaneously untouchability is in the predominant part of this paper analysis and uh, uh, how that Percy community has suffered and uh, post-colonial impact is also happening. And uh, after the uh, end of this story, we have came to that loneliness will be in standalone for that the women's sufferings. Yes, uh, I go ahead into the paper. One of the foremost author in the uh, post-colonial writing trend in is a mystery. Although he have currently resided to the Toronto, that the majority of his works are centered in Bombay, where he was born and uh, so-called as an, uh, the writer is a diasporic writer. By using a natural and direct language with straightforward description, 
he created and uh, uh, sincere and affectionate and portraying of india his book is and frequently examined the tragic circumstance of india and be separated with the poor especially poor while the balancing this uh, mystery by presenting the dignities and joy the feel in the simple and the extended families uh he does this uh, by paying the attention to the detail of his character or the daily lives the mystery has improved as a writer and uh, criticized having the lot of him for the open writing state he worked frequently and discussed the pathos and culture of the poesy in india particularly mumbai and uh, the poesy have heritage have been and significance and impact on the growth and development uh, as a writer his works provided the uh, windows into the way of the life or uh, in his uh, community and the challenges of the minorities faced in your society with a wide range of the culture the family matter especially the fine balance and family matter these two novels are set in the uh, area of the bombay it also take up some of the concern it uh, uh, as a book where the optimized and the human entrance and keep the protagonist and moving along and nevertheless the link or the insignificant at least of the mystery i desire to hear on something really different he claimed that since the dispute in a fine balance it uh, really banded together to form that the own family which helped it to maintain uh, them for while the words and family might impair and carry over but i believe that this is on the separation of uh, the universal uh, altogether especially the fine balance talking about the daily lives the mystery talking about the searches of demonstration in the fine balance and he gives the female character and dina doll the dina doll uh, especially belongs to the poesy community and the beginning of the life for it, it is and the life is and very happy and joyful and uh, he he have been portraying with the women of the mental state and expecting and struggling and needed for the self identity and it will be highly absorbed in the story and moreover this novel will been set in the uh, mid of 1990s and the setting of the rich ena characters and travel around the inheritance of dramatic as a fine balance the fine balance portraying the crisis especially the new book the mystery settled in uh, uh, nariman baikal especially this character from the family matter the man is from 90 uh, 79 years old and uh, former english professor and slowly down by that uh, advancing the age and one not one set of pakistan whereas the previous novel will be in the mystery took up this uh, poor despoing character and who he could have exploring in this world of the history from uh, bottom up the new book the mystery settled in which the 79 years old of nariman vehicle and opening segment of he restaurants and uh, he will be in a chateau apartment and a complex with his two adults uh, step child jal and uh, komi especially this uh, novel also talking about the how that women also suppressed by this uh, in the mid of 1990s especially we have go ahead in, in the deep study of this uh, two novel especially the rohinton mystery highlighting with the uh, very perspectives how that the characters all uh, really suffered in the poesy community especially uh, in the year of 1975 to 1977 the political changes is happens in the india we called as a socio political climate in indian during the emergency especially it will been happens on 1975 after this the political uh, changes of this environment the poesy communities and poesy women are totally suffered especially here the uh, uh, rogenton mystery highlighting that uh, a suffering character and realistic pictures will be highlighted on this novel especially the fine balance is talking about the dina doll sufferings and uh, this sufferings will be in the part of a caste gender and social role is the four central protagonist of this uh, novel especially this concept will be adapted in this din of a flat and each of them have holding a jobs and that is on the unimportant in india they attempted to the center their own uniqueness and while being unmoved by the community the flat is seen as an out location of the people are living in the problematic society their experience in the bombay is not 
on what they had anticipated and it represented the suffering grief worries and restless of those who have been uprooted from their home areas dina struggled to maintaining her the independent and unique life this is the women suffering dina they are uh, she is going to be in, uh, struggling for her the independent and uniqueness but uh, she constantly encountered and setback and danger from the society finally she evicted from her the apartment and made it to work as the servant in her the brothers this is also the very important thing of this woman suffering in the paper uh, uh, she is an, uh, she is going to be modified as a modern woman and they wanted to face all the strugglings and they want to stand uh, in her own feet but unfortunately the time is not uh, uh, suitable to this lady so she left out this uh, uh, she left out the apartment and she moved it to her, uh, her brother's house especially by this describing the background uh, of this each protagonist the roginton mystery empathized the significant movement uh, in the history of the nation the fine balance illustrating the better understanding of the political nativities and struggling of oppressed it uh, uh, consistently focusing on that intact detail of the people's inner lives in a fine balance the roginton mystery examine the human sorrowness and ultimate creates a room for all of the people and sufferings dina dal making a decision to leave her home in order to make her the ordinary and the sense of the self known she was born and raised in bombay but she feels isolated from her family because of the unintentional death of her husband she decided to change her life so that she is no longer to the financial depending on the guy she experiencedly as a uh, succession of emotional upheaving and shifting the emotion and ties to throughout her life dina and manak or both are failed to the endowment and due to that emergency because the manak is a main character due to this uh, emergency the manak also being the uh, part of unemployment character so the both women and men also the suffering due to this emergency the backer taken away and forced it, uh, to work as a slave in the labor camp it will mean happens on that happens on that emergency period and guys to reduce the poverty and enhancing the civic uh, beauty with the help of dina dal the new family and uh, is creating by the peoples from the many social groups and cultural interacted the harmonies the socio political authors roginton mystery has uh, recently emerged as a major literary force he statues as the key and literary character in the indian and indo canadian tradition of the picture writing has been unsolidified by a fine balance the three sisters have hanged themselves because their father cannot afford to pay the dowry this is also the women sufferings and saving their uh, parents from that embarrassment of having the unmarried daughter they were despited on hanging photos after the brother ravines and only the perspective or source of the income for the family and the chairman of the college student union in the slang while in the police custody and sealing emergency in newspaper do you realize how the lucky you are living in our neighborhood and uh, widows are treated like the trashed by that unenlightened if we uh, if you were you were a hindus in the past you would have had to jump right into the husband funeral and pray and roast along the side him it will be in this uh, lines are taken from uh, a fine balance in a, in in this line about the nusman and the uh, dinadal brothers and personified a uh, disparity between the hindus and the posi cultures while adjusting had to get married again after had the husband passing he draw attention to the posi community uh it's a very important thing it uh, these lines will be highlighting about the women sufferings of uh, especially uh, from this novel which uh, does not resisted a uh, widow from the dream marriage here the mystery empathizes the kindness of his own society or the culture because especially the indian culture is when you have go ahead for the past the indian culture is like that the male and the female discrimination or exist even in the posi community 
Dinadal brother treated half poorly, especially the brother uh, treated very poorly, especially the Dinadal suffered by the uh, by uh, his own brother and forbidden her from the visiting at the friend, forced her to perform home duties and they expected her to be a little tigerness. According to the Nusman, Nusman is the brother of uh, Dinadal and despite her the strong and desire to continue her the studies after Mrs. Soprath is a posse. Dinadal is a not permitted to that even matriculate her brother, the Nusman tries to post his will on her and advice that she married a partner of his choosing, but Dina objected and maintained her independence. She beat Rustan Dahl, who she have adored us and a great deal of Dina is representing of a new woman. After, after the long suffering, the suffering it creates the new trend of the woman. Here, especially we uh, here I have coined the new woman who rejected the stereotype of the feminist role that had been placed upon her and does not constant on being obtained by the subservience and she conducted herself in the most dignified manner. Given the horrified night when her husband passed away, there was no soaping and beating of the chest and the tearing of the hands as the one of the might anticipated from the women who have been experienced such a shock and the loss. It is on the character who, uh, who is suffering on that uh, part of Dina Dahl in fine balance. Let us, I will be in, come to that uh, uh, final ending of that uh, conclusions that the story will be in, goes on like that with the uh, women's sufferings. What is my perspective on this? The author discussed the situations of uh, desolated the world man who performed it, that uh, assignment and after the dies. Nice, he constant to surgery in the exchanging of the present and the monetary bonus that uh, could help with the granddaughter's dowry. And repugnant futures of this Indian culture is dissipating by the mystery. He calls the attention to that mistreated of the women, cosined that uh, marginalism in a culture dominated by the men and argues that the culture constructed of uh, gender difference is to be blamed it for the gender equality. This is my conclusion of the paper. Um, so uh, thank you, Mr. Kanagarajan. So you have uh, made an elaboration on uh, uh, the women's oppression and the marginalization in uh, yeah, the Indian culture too, right? So yes. how do you connect uh, this Indian culture with the uh, women's condition? Yes, ma'am, because when we have go ahead to the past, uh, um, we, the Indian culture have been, uh, we, that we called as a traditional culture. The traditional methodology how the lot of uh, harmonies and ceremonies are uh, maintaining for that women. But uh, uh, especially in the 90s also, this culture will be happening on it. So still now some of the problems also talking and uh, some of the problem also uh, happens on the traditional manner. That's why it will be connected on my paper. Okay. And how far uh, the characters are successful in striving against uh, uh, this uneven social hierarchies and uh, the inequalities? Yes, but, uh, fantastic question. Because nowadays the modernism is happening on this world. The women have such a uh, policy of the government. They will be uh, sustained on the job by the own feet. But especially when you have go ahead on the past decade, that uh, such a uh, scenario is not happens because the main domination is the predominant one. But especially uh, in my paper, the Dina Dal uh, is a suffered lot of at the, at the engage. She suffered a lot, but uh, she went to her own brother house and she stayed there. And uh, her brother also treated like an uh, slavery. So she come out and stands with her own feet and she started a tailoring job and uh, she run a business. But unfortunately, in this circumstance, the emergency happens on that India. So again, uh, she also, because that lady belongs to the POSI community. So again, uh, she supports a problem. Until that uh, uh, the emergency came to that end, 
that uh, again they have retrying and trying and trying to stand in the own feet it will mean that the final end of the story but uh, we can't do giving any final solution on that story because just they are trying to overcome all over the problem okay um so thank you for the wonderful paper i thank you best thank wishes. you thank you much thank you okay okay the next one is uh, uh, the next presenter is mr uh, sadru shama sadur a research scholar uh, so from ladit narayan mithila university i hope you are there yes ma'am yeah so let me proceed with your uh, paper thank you ma'am my paper is poetic politics in the confessional poetry of silvia plath the paper critically examines the cultural shift of the confessional poet mainly silvia plath wrote in post war american poetry under the rubric of post war isolation and going developmental practices induced by forest culture whatever psyche disturbances the contemporary generations encountered are reflected in plath's poetry unlike saint augustine's scramental confession confessional poetry primarily aims at autobiographical self self exploration in essence yet the confessional poetry departs from the life writing with its sap believing into the poet's life the kernel point of this paper is to discuss the way the poet debunk the boundaries between private and public domain and the way they prefer to write on socially stigmatized issue like alcoholism mental illness adultery suicidal thoughts and depressions by exploring these issues i argue that confessional poetry penetrates into the poetics of politics under post modernism which blurred the borderline of raw and coked decent and profound matter while examining the selected poem of plat the katha chick motto of the poet has been highly focused when they express their troubled experiences which were in descent in the past this paper zeroes on the exploring the insane theories how does confessional poetry help the narrator for the cathartic expiation of personal matters why do the poet put their private sphere on display and how does confessional poetry contains tumultuous state of america and poet's mind or it, is there any poetic politics in putting personal traumatic matter on public display while addressing these problem the paper contended that confessional poetry purposefully ruptures the boundary of private and public sphere because it is a post modernist politic politics of celebrating even the personal trauma sexual abuse adultery mental illness and death threats it can admittedly claim that the rupture of the social taboo is the politics of the poets really relates with this genre equally important postulation of aforementioned stand is that confessional poetry is the emotional therapy of the poet's troubled mind and during for this culture it is as well a journey towards self discovery that has cathartic effect while purposefully putting the individual privacy on display in effect the public display of traumatic experiences regarding the culturally stigmatized issue like drug drug use alcoholism sexuality and mental illness refer the poetic politics to replicate the ongoing social rupture of the track chiefly this paper hypothesized the generally confessional poetry unbuttoned the unspoken or hidden personal experiences which destabilized the borderline between socially acceptable and unacceptable or private or public issue in so doing it explore marital discord infidelity mental illness alcoholism drug abuse suicidal thoughts sexual perversion depression and fear of failure as the subject matter of to challenge and set a new cultural paradigm it is also lead the readers scrutinize the poet psyche unquestionably these stuff were taboos in victorian time largely this paper while analyzing confessional poetry does not aim to repudiate over suffering but rather it pay it pays attention on the politics of such articulation composed within a specific set of 
cultural circumstances in questions finally this paper depart from the poet's biographical approach to dig out confession not as the postural autonomous but as a new poetic genre indeed it has no interface with the postural discursive technique to exploit aforementioned content as method to explain explicit in sylvia plath's clauses and daddy these poem mirror the unjust social taboo which is also the technique of the poet to mark their protest by displaying the wish of new generation who break the social order indeed confessional poetry as a part of post modernism delves into the matter like adultery violence death wish infidelity sex sexuality which were taboos in the society because unlike modernism post modernism celebrates such stuff correspondingly confessional poetry suggests that it is a self revelation that serve to reveal the author's repressed anguish to depressed emotions through verses about the personal subject although feeling and emotion have long been considered a core thematic element of poetry the risk content conveyed in confessional poetry set it far apart from more traditional genre edward byne evolutes confessional poetry through its contents the intimate sometimes <coughs> so the autobiography of the poet revealed in explicit first person narration rather than the novel te technical development or formal advancement to him confessional poets use first person narrative to widen the scope of the poem and as a tool to increase the reader's emotions identification with the poet as a matter of fact this type of play readers to live victoriously through the poem endorsing this experimental power of confessional to michael folkalt also allows the postural power and articulation a ritual in which the expression alone independently of its external consequences produce interim modification in the person who articul articulate it to excrete redeems and purify him to promise him salvation for for called discover of confession by which modern state exercise power depriving an individual from his privacy moreover there is the implied connection of judo christian tradition of anticipating the purity of mind and body of salvation it is an intimate personal revelation re especially as presented in a sensationalized form in a book newspaper or film over making departure from religious and legal issues of the term the term confessional is applicable to a large or <clears throat> or practices in contemporary western culture that do not necessarily cast the confessing subject in a negative light in tune with silver clark focus on the natural advantage of the confessional rather than the supernatural benefits notably anticipates the psychoanalytic concept of catharsis this cathartic effect of confessional poetry sharply deviates from religious purpose undoubtedly confessional writing is a part of a religious tradition that dated back to augustan age and become part of a therapeutic tradition even before the advent of psychotherapy which certainly seeped and accelerated the outpouring and personal self revelation in the 20th century moreover in confessional poetry both religious belief and the freudian psychotherapy play century <coughs> moreover in confessional poetry both religious belief and freudian psychotherapy play very important role because confession relieves the confession confessions with a without the motivation of penance and psyche pain relief also represents one of the most varied and intense form and art artistic experimental in the later half of the 20th century notably the intimate disturbing nature of such material relocates guilt from the confessing individual to the society in which the trauma occur from the same fashion modern subjectivity might be seen in light of this shift from the sinful self to the traumatized self whereas confession provide a platform for those who have been oppressed 
marginalized and maltreated. Arguably, then the confessional subject has become the victimized subject for excellence with the traumatic subject matter of confessional increasingly informing concepts of individual selfhood. Nelson Sally elaborates this concept further as what made confessional poetry confessional as opposed to just personal or autobiographical was the nature and context of its re revelation. There is first of all the uh, urgency and rawness of the relevations, personal conversation and public. It was Emil Rosenthal who had coined the term confessional poet while conveying his shock over Robert Lowell's uncovering his intensively personal matter in life studies. Plath's poem, Daddy, contains Plath's personal life, history of Holocaust, and the outlet of her suppressions, which had brought trauma in her life. The narrator tells literally of victimized female persona who stand for the Holocaust Jews. She begins the poem imagining herself as a prisoner living like a foot in the back shoe of her father. Do you not do you not do any more black shoe in which I have lived like a foot for thrusty year poor and white, barely daring to breathe or echo? These lines point out the suffocation under terror haunted life of 30 years. Authentically, her father was a German immigrant in America who died when she was eight years old. She had had an Electra complex with him. While she thought she, he was equal to God, she tries to emancipate herself from his bound after his death, but she failed. Rather, she Possessed herself as a victimized prisoner living like a foot in the black boot of Gestapo after being hunted by his reminiscences. Possibly she could not be captivated of the bound, which could be the ca canopy of particularity that she likes to blur the develop her identical self. Narrators finally relieves from Electra complex is at the cost of her new life's which is independently herself reliant literally it is away from in way not only this stamping to release her angst against the daddy figure who stand for patriarchy and nazi but also the figure figuratively kills him if i have killed one man i have killed two referring these particularly the whole cast creator from which she first herself is herself. Thus, the linking her personal agony with the Holocaust till the whereby the opposition convert into an oppressed man. She gives a huge vent uh, of her suppressed ego and rebunk daddy's figure from whom finally she separated from Electra complex. Daddy, daddy, you bastard. I am thought after the metaphoric annihilation of daddy figure, she relieves and, and sets free from father fixation and set out her new identity. This is how the how she succeed in translating her opposed self into the free self. In nutshell, this she turned out to be an independent lady who debunked the challenges, the patriarchal authority, her poetic skill release on transforming her personal trauma into the public matter. From the same plain plots clauses, also gives an outlet of her anguish against the myth patriarchy. Indeed, these clauses, clauses at Rhodes. Greece is a statue of sun god of Greek time that represents male supremacy. According to the myth, it is it was gigantic statue before it fell down. Most importantly, this clumped statue also replicates her this his father whom the narrator tries to comprehend it. Here the female narrator play a role of a crotter who trained to carefully. The poem begins with the incapability of narrator I to understand her father. She glues her fragmented memories to read him as a cattle links several part of the body. I shall never get you put together entirely. Pieces glue and properly joined. These lines indicate the failure 
aware of the narrative person persona to know her daddy because the climbed experiences she had had with him given to this situation the memories she had about him is he was mm -hmm. Undeniably, please. Uh, could you please wind up, right? It's okay, ma'am. Okay, I'm doing. I'm doing so. Confusingly, confessional poetry by nature is a expression of personal experiences which get vented, provoking the cathartic repression. It is also an earn towards subjectivity exploration of the poet. Also, confessional poetry are crazy and preoccupied with socially stigmatized idea that troubles their mind. Being the postmodernist poet, they blur the borderline between private and public subject matter. In so doing, their autobiographical writing dramatized the unacknowledged trend of the age. Sylvia Plath's struggle with trouble mind and are master in shaping their personal ventilate views because in their confessional experiences there is unpromised honesty and power of sublime august of the age and which is their politics to debunk the social stigma thank you madam yeah um thank you mr sajra sharma and uh, it's indeed a uh, um, and a uh, very profound paper and within that study on uh, Sylvia Plath's um, convention, uh, confessional poetry mm -hmm. and uh, so you have discussed about the social taboo and self-revelation mm -hmm. and the challenges uh, uh, faced uh, uh, by her right uh, under the patriarchal authority and psychotherapy and uh, how the confessions release the confessor and uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a really a good paper, but uh, we have uh, because of uh, time constraints, we couldn't uh, right um, uh, uh, have a discussion time. Right? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Best wishes. Next uh, uh, is uh, Miss Saumia, so a research scholar from the Central University of Karnataka. So, are you there, Miss Saumia? Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Yeah, you can uh, carry on. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Am I audible, ma'am? Okay. Yeah, you're audible. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, very good Good evening to everyone. Uh, my paper is titled Gendered Economy and Female Body, an Analysis of Francis Chung's If I Had Your Face. It's an attempt to analyze how the economy, which itself is constructed on gender biases, manipulates female body and how this affects the life of women, especially those who belong to lower classes. In addition, it tries to explore the influence of male gaze in defining and designing beauty standards. Being a socio-realist novel, If I Had Your Face depicts the chaotic lives of five young women through the voice of four among them. If I had your face is set in contemporary Seoul, the capital city of South Korea. South Korea, also known as the plastic surgery capital of the world, is one of the top 10 constantly growing beauty industries around the globe. The new beauty standards set by the nation with its advancing cosmetic industries has compelled drastic effect in the gendered economy, in particular on the survival of the working class women. The boom of South Korean plastic surgery industry has been influenced by sociocultural and economic factors as well. For instance, they believe physiognomical factors can influence their fortune. But the major factor which influenced the industry was the financial crisis that Asia has undergone towards the end of 20th century. In the novel, one of the major characters named Curie recounts that she knew the only chance that she had to uplift herself and her family from poverty was to change her face, even before a fortune teller told her to do so. In South Korea, job applicants have traditionally been required to include a photo of themselves in applications. One study found that 80% of job recruiters in South Korea cited that physical appearance was an important factor in screening candidates. According to various studies conducted by Reuters and all, up to 46% of female college students in South Korea have had experience with plastic surgery. 
it has been uh, it has even become a common graduation gift for many individuals influence of gaze is evident in the standardization of beauty the term gaze describes how viewers engage with visual media originating in film theory and criticism in the 1970s as put forth by uh, laura malvi the gaze refers to how we look at visual representations these include advertisements television programs and cinema this gaze is not confined to the screen but it also extend to the living society the male gaze which objectifies female body operates in the society as internalized male gaze in the novel curie sujin and ara are the representatives of the lower strata of the society who have internalized the male gaze by transforming herself through a series of plastic surgeries curie managed to get a job as a room salon girl in a 10 person room salon a room salon is a place where girls are paid to entertain wealthy businessmen after working hours physically transformed curie is described in the novel as one of those electrically beautiful girls the stitches on her double eyelids look naturally faint while her nose is raised her cheekbones tapered and her entire jaw realigned and shaved into a slim v line long feathery eyelashes have been planted along her tattooed eyeline and she does routine light therapy on her skin which glistens cloudy white like skim milk earlier she was waxing on about the benefits of lotus leaf mask and ceramoid supplements for holding neck lines the only unaltered part of her is surprisingly her hair which unfolds like a dark river down her back this transformation is the fulfillment of male gaze it's male gaze itself especially it is a sexual objectification of female body kiri has undergone almost cosmetic procedures provided by the hospital and she remarks that it is the best among the hospital networks uh, which do uh, cosmetic surgeries singers and actresses are regulars there the beauty magazines call the hospital pretty factory the hospital is led by a male doctor and kiri states that he knows that what is going to be the next trend in beauty in other words he is the trend setter in her 2007 study hayes notes that when considering the gender of doctors eight out of every 10 cosmetic surgeon are male moreover this curing process are also a part of racial purification as the physique of transformed curie shows it is a mongoloid to caucasoid transformation Eugenia Ko explores this phenomenon with respect to Asian American women who undergo plastic surgery in particular double eyelid surgery and nose sculpting in order to transform their feature into those more characteristic of their Caucasian contemporaries although doctors are careful to avoid racist language in talking about cosmetic surgery procedures arguing that features become more proportionate or suitable while patient retain their distinctive ethnic appearance it is evident that the dominant aesthetic standard among cosmetic surgery recipients is inherently racist as a sorry apart from this uh, surgeries this kind of cosmetic surgeries uh, these surgeries are uh, highly expensive to find financial support to undergo these surgeries young women like curie and sujin are forced to approach money lenders who run room salons by accepting this money these beautiful women or beautified women are enforced to work under them as a result they become slaves of room salons and the slaves of upper class men indeed in what must be one of the most uh, audacious triumphs in market something women need and deserve and the serious risks such as uh, disfigurement or even death and long painful recovery periods are for the most part unacknowledged in the popular media about these procedures gender economy has many complicated layers 
which attributes gender to the levels of economic production, circulation, and reception. On one level, professions themselves are gendered. Uh, I'm sorry if I am exceeding the time constraints. Uh, let me conclude it with uh, okay. my yeah. observation that he observed yeah. uh, the complicated and uh, blurred layers of uh, gendering among economic levels in his new new world and gendered economics. Uh, in that paper, he observes about uh, how professions are gendered, uh, especially concerning the household work and uh, the caretaking works and uh, uh, sex work in particular. Because uh, even in nowadays, we all are aware that sex works are not uh, confined to one particular gender. There are transgender sex workers, there are male sex workers. But uh, when the term sex worker is mentioned, it has an uh, connotation that uh, that leads to female. So uh, economic uh, flow is uh, always gendered and it has a connection with setting beauty standards and uh, these are basically driven by male desires. Thank you for the patient listening. Mm. Um, um, Ms. Samia, uh, it's really a thought-provoking paper right uh, uh, on the uh, present capitalism and the consumerism right and how women are being uh, objectified uh, because of uh, the male gaze you know women internalize those male gaze and uh, so undergoing the process of racial you know, purification right um, um, so uh, it's a really a good paper, and um, best wishes, ma'am. Because because yes, of time, we couldn't discuss that.